Welcome back to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, and my guest today led Washington State to the Rose Bowl in 1998. We are back with former NFL quarterback Ryan Leaf. So we were just talking about your career in the NFL and how you grew up. Um, you were the man. You knew you were really, really good in your, in your town. And then you're in the NFL. Four years later, you're out. How does that hit you? Well, I thought it was going to be okay because I thought I... For whatever reason, when I got to the NFL, I developed this sense of success as being these three things, money, power, and prestige. And now I had it all, right? And even when it was over in four years, I thought I could walk away with those things still intact. The, t the, the prestige part was a bit tarnished, but still former NFL football player. Wow. You know, that's, that's what everybody wants to, to have and the money part was so important to me. I don't know why or where I developed it. It wasn't from my father, it wasn't, it was something that I developed that that, that gave me this power. Status? I guess, um, but it was what I truly believed was success and I had achieved that in my mind, I guess. So it didn't matter to you that you're known but you're also known for being this guy who was supposed to be a top quarterback. Right, I'm, the, I'm like the, the ultimate narcissist, right? I walk into the room and I'm like, please don't recognize me, please don't recognize me. And then like 15 minutes later, I'm like, why isn't anybody recognizing me? Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's a weird um, brain chemistry when it comes to that stuff. Even if I was known as something negative, at least I was known, wh whatever that looked like. I didn't necessarily know what they were saying behind my back. The fact that they were just talking to meant, meant something special to me, I don't know why. So what happens next after this? It's it's well known too, you have an addiction to Vicodin and it wasn't for anything physical, it was because you say you were trying to numb something emotional. Have you been able to pinpoint exactly what that was, what emotional pain you were trying to cover? Well, I think I was clinically depressed. You know, I felt like a failure. I was told by everybody else I was a failure too. And mm -hmm. about three months after quitting, mm -hmm. I said, told people I retired, but you know, we, who retires at 28? Um, I was in Vegas for a fight and it's one of those things were to be seen and gambling and suit and front row at the fight, all that stuff. So uh, I was there, they were announcing celebrities in the audience, Tiger Woods, Charles Barkley, audience just cheers and applauds. And they announced my name and the whole MGM Grand just booed and hissed. Um, and it's not like that hadn't happened before, right? You play in an opposing stadium, but you're wearing this armor a helmet, sure. shoulder pads. And You're this supposed mo to be the enemy. Right. In this moment, my attic mind heard, not only were you a terrible football player, Ryan, but you're, you're an awful human being. And sure enough, that evening, I was going to have to go into parties where there were future Hall of Famers, Hall of Famers, Super Bowl champs, where I always felt really less than and judged. Um, I ran into an old acquaintance, and this night he'd give me a couple of pills. I'd mix it with the alcohol, and I walked in and out of those parties feeling nothing. I didn't feel any of that judgment, didn't feel any of that less than. It didn't make me feel any better. I just, I just didn't feel anything. And I was just begging for, for that, not to feel any of that depression, that sadness, that, that narcissism. I didn't want to feel any of that stuff. And it worked immediately. Was it in the moments that you tried to take your life that you realized you wanted to make a change? No, I wanted to end my life. That's what I was looking for. The crazy thing about an addict is, and especially me, there's not a consequence great enough to stop you from trying to not feel those feelings. You don't want to feel that at all, and you'll do anything to make that go away. And in my case, the, the substance I used was called opiates. That's the difference. People use many different mood-altering substances, whether it's alcohol, sex, gambling, food, you know, drugs, it doesn't matter. Mine, I just I found one that worked for me. I can't believe where my life is now and that I, would, that I was in that place. Yeah. So I know exactly how some of the people I've met and worked with couldn't be in that same place and how awful and, and lonely it feels. I think that's the big reason why it has to, like, it has to be the foundation of who I am. Otherwise, you know, I'll, I'll be right back to that person again. You have to keep remembering it and going back and knowing that that place was a part of you? Yeah, I th I, not necessarily remembering it. I mean, I have my scar on my wrist where I tried to, you know, so I see that every day. It also makes, you know, I can't believe I was at that point just because of where my life is now because of the choices sure, I made. it's a different you. But it's, it's imperative that I do remember that, like, if, if I don't keep evolving, if I don't, if I just start to think, okay, I got this, like I once did before, 
I can easily just go right back to that same spot. I mean, that's, that's what mental health is, you know. Unless you evolve with it, um, you just go right back to where you stop treating it. And I don't want anybody ever to be as miserable as I was.